Mr. Perkins? Uh-huh. Flight 502 leaves at 6.30 p.m. Your arrival in London is at 6.10 a.m. Flying time is about six and a half hours, sir. May I have a window seat? Yes, of course, but at 36,000 feet, there really isn't much to see. Any seat will do that. Your first class lounge is next to gate 43. Thank you. You got gum, uh, antacid pills, candy, acid pills. Mama, they're not coming. Would I expect Rosalie to come all the way from Long Island or Maurice from Jersey when he has uh, two operations tomorrow? Would I expect that? Yes. So, them I'll bring back nothing. The kids, yes, <laughs> but them, <laughs> nothing. You'll bring, like you always bring. You got your passport? Ticket? All your hotel reservations? Ah, oh, no. I've been already since your father, he should rest in peace, died. To the Catskills, to Atlantic City, to, to Los Angeles, uh, Montreal, where I didn't understand the word. <laughs> Every February, by Cousin Bertha in Miami. But, Mama, this time it's the grand tour all over Europe. Europe, ship, ship, ship. I was born there. Incoming passengers. What'd you expect, Jack? Reporters, groupies, autograph hounds? You know, I gotta be the best kept secret in town. If you blow it this time, you're gonna be out for good. Yeah, Benny, I had 10 gold records. Nobody knows I'm alive. It's four years ago in this business, ancient history. Don't forget something, Benny. You built that agency on my back. I remember, that's why I'm here. Yeah, but Benny, you Now look, listen, for once in your life, listen, Jack. When you're on top, you can rape Whistler's mother in Macy's window at high noon and get away with it. Okay. But when you're trying to scratch your okay. way back up, Benny, one okay. traffic ticket, and you're out it. in your case. Benny, I got it. Anything you say, anything you say, pal. So you the opening act in three towns, but it pays expenses. That's good. The spaghetti western is going to make you sailable. Benny, it'll work. I, I'm agreeing with you. Anything you say. Now, be on time. Be on time. Cooperate. I'll cooperate. No making it with the director's girl. No making it with the director's girl. Maybe his wife. I'm more worried about his daughter. Will Dr. Kenyon Walker report to the TOA First Class Lounge? Dr. Walker, report to the TOA First Class Lounge. Is someone meeting you in London? My mother. Well, I'm sure she'll be glad to see you. She always is. Dr. Walker? What? I asked if you were Dr. Walker. Grunwald. Otto Grunwald. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Grunwald. Excuse me. Did you say Dr. Walker, Dr. Kenyon Walker? Is he on this flight? Why, yes. Do you know him? No. No, I don't know him. I, I don't know him. I hope you have a nice flight, sir. I sure hope I don't sit next to him. You asked to sit alone. I always sit alone. Would you like a drama me? Ray, hmm? would you like a drama me? Why? You look so tense. I'm perfectly all right. Ray, we need this trip. Well, it was my idea, wasn't it? Yes, but I just... Look, it's what you always wanted. London, Rome, Paris, Athens, now you're getting it. I know, but it, it was just so quick, that's all. One minute I was dressing to go and have dinner at the club, and then the next I'm packing. That's the way I always do things, Claire. No, no, actually, you, you never... please met... stop talking so much? I've got things on my mind. I hurt too, Ray. Good afternoon, Miss Brayley. Nice seeing you again. Perfect flying weather. Sure. I started preparing at noon. Thank you. 
I bite. I've had my shots. Tell me the truth. You're irresistibly drawn to older women, right? Dr. Walker. Yes. Your service called. Oh, I have your phone. Right over there. Thank you. Good evening, Miss White. Good evening, Captain Larkin. What are we carrying? 21 in first class, 217 in tourist. Not too bad. Yeah. Can I get you anything? Not right now. Looking forward to your last trip as a working girl? I'm looking forward to a small wedding, a house, and some kids. I've been liberated long enough. Well, we're glad you could make it. Sorry I'm late for traffic. Oh, why am I such a klutz? Aren't you going to miss all this glamour? It's glamorous for you. You get to fly sitting down. I'd like to help you ladies, but somebody's got to drive this airplane. Hello? Hello. Mr. Paul Barrons. That's right. Have a nice flight. Well, the possibilities seem rather limited. I'm sure you'll make the most of it. Uh, yes, I, I always do. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Can I help you with something? I'd like to see your captain. Oh, certainly, Sergeant. He's upstairs in the cockpit. Thank you. Can I help you? Captain Lark? Yes. I'm uh, Detective Sergeant Myers from New York City Police Department. They said I should check with you about my gun. Uh, by law, as a police officer, I'm supposed to carry it at all times. I'm sorry, on this plane, I'm the law. I don't like pistol-packing passengers, even if they're off-duty cops. I'll return it when we land. Well, if you ask a question, you get an answer. Uh, I'm gonna feel naked without it. You get lonely, you can have visiting privileges. On vacation? Uh, don't I wish. No, it's a, uh, an exchange course with Scotland Yard. They're gonna teach me how to drink tea, I teach them how to keep from getting mugged in Hyde Park. Have a nice trip. Take care of the kid. She's touchy. Now boarding at gate 12. Le vol qui au an va en Poulons est maintenant prêt. Les voyageurs sont priés de t'assembler au guichet numéro 12. TOA flight 502 for London. Now boarding at gate 12. Miss Briley. Oh, God bless you. You will finish this before takeoff. Don't I always? Briley? Mona Briley? Well, this is indeed a pleasure. I'm Paul Barron. 
I'm sure with perseverance you can overcome it. <laughs> Isn't that against regulations, serving booze before takeoff? She's an exception. If she doesn't get juice, she panics when the seatbelt sign goes on. Hi. Hi. Can I take that for you? Yeah, sure. They, uh, they said that I could take it on the plane. Okay, I'll just put it with the coats, Mr. Marshall. Hey, have we met before? No, it's just that I have most of your records. Well, maybe all of them. No kidding. So do I. I think that makes two of us, and that's about it. <laughs> no. Jack Ainsley Marshall? Didn't I used... Yes, I... I used to be Jack Ainsley Marshall. And you want to know something? I'll be damned if I know who I am now. I'm sorry. That sounded stupid. I only... I only met... I mean... You were my all-time favorite. Well, thank you very much. And listen, you keep the faith because... I'm going to be Jack Ainsley Marshall again. Dear God. I'm getting off this plane. Just sit there. Just sit there and keep your voice down. I should have known. I should have known. I should have known. I just want to talk to him. Please, Raymond. Let's get off this plane. Let's let's take another plane. No. No. He's got to know it's not over for either of us. He's got to keep remembering. TOA 502 for London. Clear for takeoff on runway 90. Away first class lounge. I think we have a bomb in here. Everybody move out quickly. Come on in now, Mr. Davenport. It's safe. 
A joke. A stupid joke. Is there anything else around? Nothing. <sighs> Middle of the night. The tooth that's killing me. Some idiots playing jokes. I don't want to hear about your problem. I got the call in a motel room. It scared the hell out of me. Thought it was my wife. Dorothy, what time did you get on duty? Five o'clock, Mr. Davenport. How many flights? 502 for London and 499 to Frankfurt, leaving at 1015. Have you got the passenger list for 502? Remember him? Kid about 13? Oh, yeah. He'll make some analysts rich. I drive the rest of us crazy in the process. Last year, he boarded a plane with, um, 13 sponges. Locked up every John on the airplane. Not to notify the captain he's aboard. Oh, Mr. Davenport, here's the letter addressed to you. Mm -hmm. If they mailed it, it would have taken a week. They could have saved us to him. With any luck. Oh, my God. What is it? By the time you receive this letter, you will already know about the murders on Flight 502. One moment, sir. Commissioner. Hello, Commissioner. What's the decision? Well, I know it's not Treasury, and it's not FAA, and it's not Immigration, but... Well, they're almost four hours out. They can't come back. Every possible alternate airport sucked in. They've got to continue to London. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I'll keep you posted. Thank you, Commissioner. Well, it's my baby. I'm all set. TOA flight 502 answering cell call. Move to 1825. 1825. All yours. Thank you. Alice, would you bring me that passenger list here? Hello, Captain Larkin. Uh, this is Robert Davenport, Kennedy Security. We've got a problem. What you mean is I've got a problem, right? Here's the picture. Somebody set off a smoke bomb in the first class lounge. It turned out to be a practical joke. So what's the problem? You have a passenger in the first class section, name of Millard Kensington. He's a kid about 13. He did everything but sign his name to it. You want me to spank him or turn him over to Scotland Yard? <laughs> Just remember who he is. Now, he may have had a hand in this, too, but I don't think so. Because of the bomb scare in the lounge, I received this letter a day early. Repeat that, Davenport. I don't follow. I was supposed to receive this letter tomorrow. Instead, I got it tonight. Is that plain enough? Go on. It reads, by the time you receive this letter, you will already know about the murders on Flight 502. What? If any innocent people are hurt, I'm sorry. If I die, I want it known that it was the only way. Well? well? That's a problem. I don't suppose the guy was thoughtful enough to sign the letter. Well, it was left in the first-class lounge, so I suppose it was left by a first-class passenger. First, I want all the information you can get in the passengers in first class. All I get are names and addresses. I want backgrounds, medical records, police records, anything. Next, you get a criminal psychologist to go over that data with you. Thank you, Captain Larkin. I know the procedure. The psychologist is on his way. Uh, what do you think? Is it possible it's a bomb? I don't think so. If that letter's not a phony, it sounds like he's after particular people, which means we probably got a psychopath on our hands. Religious, political, could be anything. Look, I'll check out the kid and get back to you. I'll be here. Alice, would you get me some aspirin? This toothache is killing me.
Come upstairs, please. The captain would like to see you. Yes, sir. Sit down, Millard. Yes, sir. Millard, all practical jokes are dumb. Some are dumber than others. But some are downright dangerous, and people can get badly hurt by them. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? No, sir. You left a smoke bomb back at the first class passenger lounge at Kennedy, didn't you? Didn't you? I didn't mean to hurt anybody, sir. You didn't, not yet. In addition to the bombs, did you leave anything else? A letter? No, sir. I just wrote ha-ha on his forehead. So everybody would know it was a joke, and, and nobody would get real scared. Now, Miller, this is important. The smoke bomb doesn't matter. But the answer to what I'm asking you now could affect the lives of other passengers on this plane. Are you sure you didn't leave a letter addressed to Robert Davenport at the airport? I don't even know a Robert Davenport. Is he a friend of my father's? Okay. Go on back to your seat. Yes, sir. Now, Mallard. Yes, sir? I'll be busy for a while, but later on, come on to the cockpit. I'll show you how this machine practically flies itself. Okay? Yes, sir! Mm. What have we got? Pilots checked with the stewardess and immigration sent over what they had. Anybody put down psycho as an occupation? You know, there are two men that can be of help. A doctor and a police officer. Daniel Meyerson. Davenport, this is Larkin. TOA 502, this is uh, Kennedy Security. Go ahead. Davenport, don't be so damn formal. There's nobody on this frequency except the two of us. I checked out the kid. Smoke bomb's his, but not the letter. I'm sure he's telling the truth. Yeah, I guess that would have been all too easy. What have you got for me? A cop. There's a police officer in the first class section by the name of... Meyerson, we met. Well, you can fill him in. Oh, yeah. In case you need one, there's also a doctor, a Dr. Walker. We got a priest, too. Have we got an undertaker? As a matter of fact. I'm sorry I asked. Thank you very much. The FBI is running the first-class passengers and the crew through their computers. Oh, this tooth is just driving me crazy. Why don't you take some more aspirin? I've been eating all my popcorn. Put the passengers' names in alphabetical order, please. What for? Alice, don't ask any questions. Just do as I say, all right? We're pretty sure he's a psychopath. Now, how do we spot him? Well, if he's wearing a Napoleon hat, it's easy. Otherwise, they come in all sizes and shapes. From 11-year-old girls to 80-year-old men. Yeah, they all look perfectly normal. I'll appreciate your help. Of course. I'll uh, sit in the back of the first-class section. And do what? What a cop does best. Wait and watch. Hold it. You didn't uh, like guns. I don't like my passengers getting killed either. Listen, if, uh, if a bullet goes through the skin of this plane, what happens? Relax. We're still on the warranty. Oh, that's great. sitting back there for a while. Enjoying 
your trip, Father? Oh, very nice, thank you. Talking is better than thinking. Huh? I've seen that look on my late husband's face, God love him. His name was Sam. Uh-huh. My name is Ida Goldman. Well, it's very nice to meet you, Mrs. Goldman. If you'd like to talk, a good place to start is with your name. Uncle Charlie. Oh. Part of the story I know already. <laughs> <laughs> Your first big hit was A Lonely Shade of Blue. I wore out three different records of it. Yeah, that's really nice. You know, that song was on the top ten in the charts for 22 weeks in a row. I like that song myself. I mean, you really seem to know what being lonely is all about. Yeah, well, um, the beat goes on. Look at it. Will you look at him? Oh, Raymond, stop it. He's like an animal. And what do you think you've turned into? You no, know she's nothing more than a baby. Are you going to stare at me all the way to London? Well, I've never met the famous author before. Do not confuse random seating arrangements with a formal introduction. <laughs> Tell me, when was it that you discovered how much rudeness people will take from a celebrity? I'm sorry, Mr. Barnes. It's just that my disposition is rotten at the best of times, and... Uh, it gets noticeably worse on a plane. I, I am terrified of flying, and this almost gets me through. Oh, well, I understand that. You know, I, um, I don't normally gush, but, uh, well, I am a mystery buff. I've read all of your books, and I admire them. Now, tell me, your, your style is uh, influenced by A.J. Scott, isn't it? Mm, hardly surprising. I am A.J. Scott. Oh? Well, I am also Everett Hicks and John Wilson, and once in a while I am even Ona Barley. Well, well, I had no idea. Why, why did you choose male pen names? Well, one of my earlier husbands persuaded me that writing murder mysteries was very unladylike. And uh, as it turned out, he was ladylike enough for both of them. <laughs> But you write with such knowledge about crime. Well, Mr. Barron, writing about crime is much like committing crime. The planning must be meticulous. You... Barron's. Mm hmm Barron's. Of course. About five years ago, the Federated Bank Memory serves me right, and it always does. It was seven million dollars stolen and never recovered. Miss Bailey, I am a buyer for a dress house in New York. And I'm the happy hooker. <laughs> Davenport. Are you asleep down there? Hold it, Larkin. I think we've got our first break. According to the FBI, Dr. Walker is on his way to a country they won't specify to perform a vital surgical operation they won't describe. On a head of state, they won't name. But they want him protected. Well, maybe you can tell me who I'm supposed to protect him from. No such luck. Look, I'm one hour and 24 minutes from touchdown. Has that shrink arrived yet? Well, he's going over the stuff now. We better hurry. This nut's gonna have to make his move inside of that hour and a half. We know that. Can't you tell Larkin anything about this guy? Who says it is a guy? Larkin, did you hear him? 
Yeah, I heard him. around so much I never knew where home was. It's like that in the State Department. Hmm. It's like that in show business, too. After my mother died, I, I hardly ever saw my father. I mean, I'm sure he loved me, I guess, but, but, but he's a very, very busy, busy man. <laughs> Are you all right, Raymond? Do you want me to lie to you? No. Do you want the truth? No. How far to London are we? Uh, one hour, 12 minutes. Boy, when we need to tell Wayne, we never get it. Something just hit me. What? This killer. Maybe he isn't after the passengers. Well, who else could it be? One of us. Uh, may I have some water, please? Oh, yes. Yeah. thirsty a symptom of anything? No. It's just that you look a bit pale. My natural color? If you're not well, there's a doctor among the passengers. I'm sure he'd be glad to take a look at you. Really? Hmm. Well, thank God there's no need. I can't find it. Oh, forget it. It's only a serving fork. Why would anyone steal a serving fork? To complete a set? Come on, help me get these dishes stored away. You've lived a good life. Huh? Uh... What is a good life? Always a question with a question. <laughs> you're sure you're not Jewish? <laughs> Methodist. A good life is helping others without killing yourself. Ah. Well, yes, I, I'd say I've had a good life. I have three children, five grandchildren, ah. never a minute's worry. You are a very fortunate woman. Never a minute. But the hours and the days, you shouldn't have to hear. Uh, I, I must remember not to interrupt you. <laughs> you think there's another way to get a word in? <laughs> you married? A dedicated bachelor. To grow old without a family. Ah, but uh, I have a very big family. Without getting married? Well, when I was 13, my parents were in an accident. My mother lived for uh, two hours. She said to me, Charlie, take care of the kids. Sometimes even a mother can make a mistake. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I put them all through college, set them up in business, helped their kids when they needed it, and uh, I still do, as a matter of fact. Something wrong. You're sure you're not Jewish? Huh? <laughs> Three times already. Three times what? Three times he walks by like nothing is wrong, which means something is wrong. Uh -huh. Excuse me, Captain. Yes, sir? 
Mrs. Goldwyn is a little concerned. Uh, is something wrong? It's a little cramped up there. I like to stretch my legs. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. See? What I see is a grown-up man lying. I'm gonna brief the doctor. Yeah, I think you should. Stop playing games. You're the Baron that the police were looking for. Well, if the police found me, questioned me, let me go. Of course, if I were the brilliant criminal you say I am, I would never get caught. Well, I don't remember using the word brilliant. Why are you so interested in my alleged crime? Well, the literature of crime is filled with ingeniously devised and brilliantly executed robberies, where the prize is always lost at the last moment. Now, you, you got away with the money, and that, that doesn't merely interest me, it fascinates me. Well, then you must admit that I deserve at least a small commendation, huh? And what you deserve is a kick in the behind. The security guard was killed at the scene. One of the three hold-up men was killed in the getaway. A second found dead in the tenement. That was the fault of the execution, not the planning. The third man never did surface. Well, now, let's see. Maybe, um, maybe I killed him, eh? And made off with the money. Uh, that's a distinct possibility. <laughs> yes, the police thought so, too. Fortunately, there was no evidence to support that theory. Well... Yes, new evidence. You're not gonna find it in a double martini. That's not where I'm looking, Mr. Barron. Kennedy Security. One moment. Bob. 63rd Precinct. Got anything for me, Sergeant? Ah, uh, any idea who? Well, keep at it, will you? There's one car that's going to be switched. Which one? A few months ago, Dr. Walker received threatening phone calls. A man. What kind of calls? Well, the message was always the same. If it wasn't for you, she'd still be alive. Local call? Uh-huh. Why don't you see if any of the passengers from the New York area had a relative, female, who died on the operating table? Or if any operation was botched. It happens. Charlie, please. Oh, excuse me, yes? Uh -huh. Just a minute. Stewardess, young lady, this, not me, him. This may be nothing. Oh, this I've seen, and this is something. Doctor, it's an emergency. The man up front, I think he's having a heart attack. Get his jacket off. Loosen his collar. Roll up a sleeve. Have you got oxygen? Oh, yeah. Find his wallet. Look for a medical card. Any information about allergies. Please, no smoking while oxygen is in use. Come on, hurry up with the oxygen. Presumptive diagnosis seems to be correct, miss. He's indeed having a heart attack. Nitroglycerin. 
This isn't his first cardiac episode. His name is Never Connor. mind his name. Get the captain down here. Oh, sir. Busy now. Go ahead, Davenport. Okay. I'm listening. As okay. soon as he gets off the horn, all right? Larkin, will you listen? About a year ago, Otto Grunewald lost his wife. Davenport, don't give me a damn case history. According to Grunewald's son, an emergency call was put through to uh, Dr. Walker, Kenyon Walker. The son thinks that Dr. Walker was at a party. He never got to the hospital and she died. Davenport, is Grunewald our psycho? Well, he threatened Walker. Isn't that enough? Maybe academic. How so? They were called. Grunewald is having a heart attack. What? Dr. Walker's working on him now. Hold it, Doctor. I'm not so sure I can hold it, Captain. I just talked to New York. Captain, this man has had an acute myocardial infarction. He's an impending shock. If I don't... You've been getting threats. Some months ago, but surely we can discuss that later. The calls have been coming from him. From him? I never met the man. I don't even know his name. I can't be sure of that, Doctor. You can be sure of this. This syringe contains an antiarrhythmic. If he doesn't get it now, he'll die. If you knew this was a man who wanted to kill you, and you wanted to get rid of him, you could call it a heart attack. Shoot him with anything. It's been done before, Doc. And then you make the decision. Give it to him. Get a couple of blankets on him. I'll want that. I don't like the implication. If he dies, I've been a doctor for 35 years. I'm answerable for any decision I make that means the difference between life and death. But not to you. Just to my peers and my profession. At this moment, doctor, you're responsible for one life. I'm responsible for 250. You do your job. I'll do mine. How long before you know? If he's going to live? A few minutes. Oh, wait. Shoot yourself. If he dies, you couldn't possibly know if I gave him too much or too little. Listen, it's Dr. Ferguson's opinion. Gruenwald did not leave the letter. Scratch him as a potential. He scratched himself. The potential killer Gruenwald just had a heart attack. His potential victim, Dr. Walker, pulled him through. I'm running out of time. Is there anything else, Doctor? No, that's all. I thank you. No, just stay quiet. The man I wanted to see dead saves my life. <laughs> There's an irony in that, Doctor, that I don't find pleasant. The only woman I knew, the only woman I ever wanted to know. You're a fortunate man. You knew some happiness. Fortune. She's dead. She died because you didn't get to the hospital. Mr. Grunewald, at the moment, you're my patient. If you insist on becoming emotional... No, 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 no. No, no I won't. I won't, I promise. What she needed was a delicate operation. 
They said you were the best man to do it. But you were at a party. You were talking business, a big deal. She died because money was more important. Mr. Grunwald, you're accusing me. Maybe I'm guilty, I don't know. Maybe if I'd been there, I could have saved your wife. I wish I could remember the night, but I don't. A woman dies, and you don't even remember. Hardly a day goes by that I don't receive an emergency call. Some I can save, some I can't. I try. That's all I can do. Am I supposed to feel sorry for you? No. Just try to understand. You saved my life. I thank you. But I hate you. And that's something we'll both have to live with. Seven million dollars. That and small bills would fill a couple of steamer trunks. <laughs> At least. Oh, uh, Miss, would you tell the captain I'd like a word with him, please? Oh, Miss Riley, he's in the cockpit. I don't think... Oh, he... honey, just tell him it's very important, okay? I'll meet him halfway in the lounge. Okay. Would you excuse me just a moment, please? Yes. Very... Oh, and don't go away because I'm not finished with you yet. Hi, Father. Heard any good confessions lately? I beg your pardon? See you in church. I'm a little busy right now, Miss Brown. Oh, could... well, what I have to tell you, Captain, may be what you're busy about. There's an imposter aboard. An imposter? Mm. There's a gentleman downstairs who is dressed as a priest, but he is not a priest at all. Now, what makes you so sure? Well, when Mr. Grunewald was having his coronary and Dr. Walker was taking heroic measures to save his life, at no point did our friend in the clerical collar move forward to inquire if Grunewald was a Catholic and would require extreme unction. Now, that is very unpriestly like behavior. You're very observant, Miss Briley. I talk and trade. Oh, and there's one more thing. I don't know about you, but in all my life, I don't ever remember meeting a priest who wore fingernail polish. Fingernail polish? Fingernail polish. I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't mention this to anyone else, Miss Briley. There is something very wrong, isn't there? Not yet, there isn't. Just her. Oh. Here, let me help you down to your seat. And ruin my reputation? Don't be silly. Hi. Yes, Captain. You may be getting a break. Put my arson on. Yes, sir. Speak to you a moment. Thank you. Myerson. Listen, there's a chance that priest is a phony. I'll have Davenport check him out. I'm sitting next to him. That's right, Davenport. Nail polish. I'll, uh, I'll get right on it. Nail polish? Don't look at me, I'm Lutheran. Would you get the immigration report on him? It does seem a bit unusual, to say the least. Uh, Father Thomas Healy, address 1749th, New York City, St. Augustine. Why would a man masquerade as a priest? Possibly a... 
clinical manifestation of religious hysteria. On the other hand, he might be trying to duck some speeding tickets. Up, line three, Monsignor. Monsignor, I hate to bother you at this hour, but... Oh, this is uh, Robert Davenport, security at Kennedy Airport. Uh, no, no, nothing like that, but I, I do have a question for you. Sir, do you have a Father Thomas Healy at St. Augustine's? I see. Well, thank you. Yes, thank you, Father. Uh, sorry to have bothered you. They had a Thomas Healy. He died four months ago. You know what? You know what I think we ought to do? I think you and I are going to write a hit song right now, right this minute. Hey, why don't we call it Come Fly With Me? Come Fly With Me. How about this for a song? I got those lonely in three continents, crying in five languages, <laughs> no. blues, over you, baby. Cha-cha-cha. No. No. no, you're no. not going for that no. one. You're not going to... No. You know... I was really down when I got on this plane. I want to thank you for the lift. That makes two of us. How long has he been up there? Maybe they're just having a drink. Look, Claire. Look, Claire, I know what I'm doing. God didn't make you his judge and jury. God didn't take her from us. He did. Raymond, it's all over. There's nothing you can do about it. Like hell, I can't. You're the prettiest girl I've ever seen. I bet you're only 17. Say you'll stay and we won't part. Little girl, you stole my heart. I a special song. Oh, oh. oh <laughs> shucks. You're going to make me blush. For Wait a minute, Larkin. Will you wait a minute? This is important. You have a passenger, Raymond Garwood. I repeat, Raymond Garwood. Now, according to the New York police, some months ago, his daughter... Here's something else, Davenport. Garwood just tried to kill Jack Marshall. What? Tried. Nobody was hurt. One broken guitar string. Well, did he admit to leaving the note? He denied it. Well, what does Myerson think? He thinks he's telling the truth. So do I. Scratch Garwood and Marshall. What about the priest? He's a phony, that's for sure. The FBI is running him through the computer now. We'll have something on him soon. Make it damn soon. We're running out of time. I'm sorry. You didn't do anything, ma'am. I should have warned you. Why me? I... I don't know him. What did I ever do to him? You killed my daughter. What the hell is... What, what are you talking about? She was found dead in your bedroom. God. Come on, that was in all the papers. The girl OD'd. I wasn't even there. Hey, it was a party, yeah, and it was at my place, but I left early. I never knew what happened. The police cleared me. Everybody knows that. They told him, but... he's never stopped blaming you. Yeah, well, that's crazy! 
We were going to have a surprise party for her 16th birthday. Say to him anything but the truth. I knew my daughter. Ray didn't. Look, your daughter dated a couple guys in the band. She was. I know what she was. But Ray only has a memory of her. Please. Help him. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry about your daughter. I I wish there was something I could say to you to, to make you feel better. I, I She talked about you all the time, played your records all the time. And when she ran away, I knew where she was going. Yeah, well, see, she met one of the guys in my band, and he brought her to my place. Honest, I never knew her. I never met her. Except, you know what? Everybody said she was a real nice person. How does she get mixed up in drugs? It just happens, Mr. Garwood. Kids want to be part of something today, you know? They, they'll do anything to be part of something. They, they meet the wrong people. And they get in the wrong hands. It just happens. How do you stop them? I don't think enough people try. Do you know what? You tried, Mr. Garwood. You really tried. She, she talked to Ray, and she, she'd tell Ray how hard you tried. And how good you were to her. She really did. She said that? Yeah. And Mrs. Garwood, she, she talked about how, how you both loved her. She said that. She did. She, she really loved you. She thought about you all the time. <laughs> Are you going to Europe on business? It's vacation. <laughs> Me, I'm always taking vacations. Thanks to my children. They must uh, love you very much. I'm their mother, no? So they're always sending me on vacations. You are a very lucky woman. You weren't listening, Charlie. Yes, I heard. I saw the look on your face. But, well, I, I don't like to pry. It showed. So, like I was saying, they always send me away. Maybe I do get in the way. Oh. Maybe I'm, I'm too much of a mother. Maybe I butt in a lot. You figured that out, no? Not, uh, not butt in. You're interested in people. So how come when I go on vacations, I sit in the hotel room until it's time to go home? If 
he's on schedule, he has exactly 40 minutes to touchdown. We may be on the wrong track. People don't go around masquerading as priests. It's got to be out there. Besides, my first can handle things. I, uh... I think our problem might be a little more complicated than we thought. What do you mean? The target might be the crew. They crossed our minds. I want you to give me a rundown on everybody, including yourself. My whole life history? No, I think it's this particular flight. I've been on New York to London flight two years. My engineer's been with me eight years. Always Europe? No, I've flown every domestic route, but only two years transatlantic. What about your co-pilot? Just signed on. And the ladies? Our head stewardess Karen's been with TOA about 18 months. Four years of global before that. Oh, and for the record, she's getting married. This is her last flight. That's a great way to start a honeymoon. What about the other one? Mira. And she's cheerful and bright. Bumps into things a lot. Yeah, I noticed then. How long has she been around? Five, six years on this run. Well, just to touch all bases. And I want you to level with me. Have you ever been responsible for an accident in which people were killed? Did you ever kill an innocent bystander? It's nothing personal. Sure, it's personal. It's what I do for a living. The passengers get on this plane. They can't wait to get off. They're mostly worried about boredom. At every minute they're on board, pilots, like me, are responsible for their lives. Yeah. Well, when they're on the ground, your passengers think that policemen do nothing except hand out traffic tickets until they're in real danger. Yeah, when there's trouble, then cops like me have the same responsibility. Now, that's what I do for a living. Well, I guess that makes us professionals. It's up to us to handle it, huh? Incidentally, I uh, never shot anybody I wasn't aiming at. That's okay. I never lost a plane or a passenger. Captain? Yeah? Kennedy Security. They say it's important. Yeah, Davenport. Larkin, we got lucky. We got a make on the priest. How lucky? A long rap sheet. He's a three-time loser, all felonies. His real name is Melvin Hoffman, H-O-F-F. -F. I know how to spell it, Davenport, as he wanted. Not until now. He's been on parole for five years. Clean, perfect record. But now he's left the country illegally with a passport stolen from a dead priest. We may have our man. Yeah. Yeah. Anything, so I'm really... gonna check the joins. You wait right here. Is he the one? We'll soon find out. <sighs> Walk empty. Maybe he went back to the tourist section. It's possible. Look, you, uh, you walk back there, nice and casual like, all right? Mm -hmm. If you spot him, you keep right on walking. I'll wait here. I don't want to spook him, okay? Yes, sir. Easy now. Checked and rechecked every name. Keep your eyes open. Why 
Sergeant? He's not here. He's not anywhere. Sergeant, nobody gets out of a 747 at 38,000 feet. If a door opens, you'll know it. Okay, we'll check again. There's nowhere in this whole plane. Sergeant, nobody gets out, out of Out of a 747 at 38,000 feet. Yeah, I know, I know. Where's this go? It's an elevator to the storage hold. It's where we keep food and special cargo. Never noticed it before. Everybody sit down. That goes for you, mister. I said sit down. Doctor, I'm gonna need you. I know he's dead, but according to the book, you gotta make it official. I don't want anything touched. Just make sure. You sure he's dead? Yes. Strangulation. Thanks, Doc. Going back to your seat, huh? Please. This man is Detective Sergeant Meyerson of the New York Police Department. Captain, there's been a murder on board. What? A what? Murder? I think it's time you told everyone exactly what's going on. Someone from first class left a message at the airport. It said there'd be a murder on this flight. Well, the man who was killed was not a priest, he's a known criminal. His murder may be what that letter was all about. If so, then no one has anything to be concerned about. Except the person who killed him. I'm going to ask all of you to remain in your seats throughout the rest of the flight and until the British authorities take charge. Want to add anything? Did any of you see anything that you want to tell us about? <laughs> Nobody ever sees anything, do they? What? You heard me, Davenport. Hoffman was murdered. Well, who did it? We don't know. Well, I'll relay that information to Davenport. My plane and my passengers are still in danger. I mentioned a murder. I didn't tell him the note said murders, plural. We know that. Come up with something before they find out I'm lying through my teeth. A man is killed, and it don't worry you. A month ago, it would have. What does that mean? I stayed too long at the fair. I like that. And I think I know what it means. And that I don't like. I don't, uh, uh, tell me more about yourself. Me, you know. You, I thought I knew, but now I don't know. I don't want to burden anyone. That part of you I learned before. <laughs> so try to burden. See if it hurts. You are very easy to talk to. Yeah. You sure you don't mind? I promise. Well, it was uh, quite unexpected. I have a complete physical every year, and... Now I know. How long did they give you? Three, maybe four months. Ah, not going to burden you with my problem. <laughs> my children say, Mama, don't worry, we'll handle it. And that's as it should be. But instead, they worry and I handle it. <laughs> I'll bet you do. <laughs> Mr. Barron's, your slip is showing. What are you talking about? What do you mean? Well, even allowing for the normal impact of a murder on board a plane, you were devastated when that priest was found. 
Well, maybe not to you, but murder is a shocking thing to anybody. But even more so to someone who knew the victim. You know, the captain told us that he was not a priest. In fact, I told the captain, but I think you knew even before I did that he wasn't. I think that you know exactly who he was and exactly what he was doing on board this plane. Do you want me to do that? No, it's all right. I'll pick up the sandwiches. Why don't you just bring the coffee when it's ready? Okay. Anything new from Kennedy? They're jumping all over Davenport, but it hasn't done much good. Oh. I met him. He's not a bad guy. If we get out of this without any more trouble, no thanks. You can invite him to your wedding. If we ever get out of this plane. Stay in the cockpit. You'll be safe here. You think so? I'm up. Jack the Ripper. Oh, come on. That's funny, Fred. Funny. Sixteen more minutes. It's all over. John strangled. Where were you? Right here. What's wrong? There has been murder. Murder? That's impossible. Nobody left this section. She's topside and dead. I'm telling you, nobody even got out of their seats. I never took my eyes off of them. What about tourists? No, no. Let her keep them. Somebody in first class. Yeah, I better radio it in. What's happening, Raymond? I don't know. It shouldn't happen to someone so young. It's incredible. Charlie, I've made a decision. If we live through this, oh, are we gonna live? My, my, look who's heading for AA. You need this more than I do. Listen, what I don't need right now is a drunk abroad. Under ordinary circumstances, I would resent the drunken part of that statement. Can't you get it through that big old brain of yours that there is a homicidal maniac on this plane? 
No, I don't think so. Oh, no? He's already killed two people. No, not a maniac, Mr. Barrett. A maniac, at least in my books, doesn't leave advance notice in a letter at the airport. No, I definitely think there's a connection between these two murders. And, of course, seeing as you knew Hoffman... Look, look, you, you, you've got to help me. Well, of course, Mr. Burns. But I, I think, you see, I, I have reason to believe that I'm next. Next what? Next him! The next one to be killed! Now, how would you ever get a notion like that? Well, you see, Hoffman, the, the, the phony priest, he, he was an associate of mine. And that stewardess, he must have made a deal with her. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Calm down. You're not making any sense. What kind of a deal? What difference does it make what kind of a deal? I'm telling you, I'm the next one to be killed. You think it was Hoffman who hired the stewardess to get all the money out of the country? Yes, yes, he had to be. Yes, that's the connection, don't you see? And I'm next, I... You know something, Mr. Burns? I think you're right. No, 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 Just no, 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 listen, no. Just turn around. Oh. Wait a moment, I'm... Now, listen. Now, would everybody please turn around? Thank you. Now, I'm going to need some witnesses up in the lounge. Let me explain. Just be quiet. I'd like the two of you. Mister, don't make me hurt you. Listen, Barons, just move to the end of the plane. You don't understand. I... Both of you. We better do like he wants. And if we don't. Come here when a crazy has a gun. You do. Mr. You and your girlfriend. Don't worry about it. It's going to be all right. Let's just go up. Come on. Okay, Doc. This man is ill. I'm not leaving him. Of course, I understand. You have your job to do. I have mine, Mr. Barnes. Riley, I especially want you. Yeah, I think you are really going to appreciate the next few moments. You don't have to wave that cat pistol around at me, Sergeant. You couldn't keep me away with a cannon. Look, I eat walk. Nobody comes up these stairs. Understand? Nobody. Maya, so will you? Shut up! And move. Move over to that side. Please. Mr. Burns, up against the bar. Ah, that's fine. Yeah, that's just going to work fine. Myerson? What the hell's going on? Justice, Captain. A little late, but most effective. You're about to witness an execution. Myerson, put the gun down. I don't want to hurt anybody, Captain, just him. So please do what I say. You move over there. Thank you. Now, 
All of this is going to be perfectly legal. Everything done by the book. And all of you... All of you are going to be the witnesses. For God's sake! God! What do you know about God? This man... Five years ago, this man engineered the robbery of the Federated Bank. Seven million dollars scored and a security guard killed. I didn't kill anybody. An ex-cop? They shot him in the back. It wasn't a great heist. Sloppy, really. Sloppy. But you got away with it. And the whole department made it look like jackasses, and everybody laughed. They laughed at the law because you got away with it. You see, once somebody gets away with something, I mean, once somebody gets away with a crime, the law, it looks ridiculous. And justice is defeated. And the jungle takes over. And I wasn't going to let that happen. I wasn't going to let that happen. We all knew Barron's organized it. He flaunted it in our faces, but we couldn't prove it. Oh, you've got to have proof, don't you? Yeah, you've got to have proof. Three long years, I hounded every studio in New York. The break came finally when somebody fingered Hoffman. See, Barron's was using Hoffman to smuggle the stolen money out of the country in small parcels, building up a Euro-dollar account somewhere, but how? Who could make regular trips to Europe 20 or 30 a year without attracting attention? <laughs> Simple, wasn't it, huh? Uh, sure. Somebody on the crew of a regular flight to Europe? Somebody like a stewardess? Mr. Mr. I have been dogging your tracks for five years now. Everybody else gave up, but I wouldn't. No, I wasn't about to. Sweating, Mr. Barron's boy, oh, like that. Yeah, that's nice. Go on, lick your own juice. Taste it. Go on, I want you to taste it. I want you to know how that guard must have felt five years ago before he was blown in half. You don't even remember his name, do you? Oh, you should have remembered his name. He was quite a man. Seven years older than I was. Yeah, he was quite a man. His name was Myerson, too. Myerson? We're close to touchdown. I gotta get to the cockpit. Your co-pilot can handle that. You gotta give him instructions. He's never made this airport. Myerson, there are 250 people on this plane. Give you thirty seconds. All right, give me twenty seconds and hit the oxygen switch. What? Just do it. Captain, thank you. I went through the crew's hand luggage and the storage hatch down below. The last shipment of the stolen money, about sixty thousand dollars, was in Vera Franklin's bag. Case closed, and justice is done. You see, Mr. Barrett's? Nobody's laughing now. The jury's in. And you know the verdict. Myerson, listen to me. The passengers. Their lives are our responsibility. It's our job, remember? We're the professionals. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. But I have waited so long for this.
Flaps 20. Flaps 20. Harold, this cockpit fills with smoke. Gotcha. How do we look? You are north two degrees. Please turn to accommodate. You are three miles from touchdown. Flaps 40. Flaps 40. You're down. You're down. Flaps 50. Flaps 50. Idle checklist. Checklist complete. 100 feet. Brake set. Lock it. Lock it. You read me. Davenport? Lock it. Lock it. Get this. It's the cop, Myerson. His precinct doesn't even know he's gone. And his captain thinks he's headed for a complete nervous breakdown. Lock it. Lock it. Do you read me? You know something, Davenport? Your security stinks. Is everybody all right in here? Yeah. How are the passengers? They're shook, but okay. What a nightmare. Right, Harold. Take care of them, will you? Yeah. Sure, Captain. Karen? Something wrong, Captain? Everything. It's a lousy world, isn't it, Karen? Poor, clumsy little Vera. Yeah, how do you suppose she got mixed up in something like this? Uh, easy, I guess. Somebody was smuggling the money for Hoffman. When he was killed, they panicked and put the money in Vera's suitcase. What do you mean? Myerson killed the wrong stewardess, didn't he? 
Uh, both you and I know Vera didn't have that money when she came on board. She spilled her bag, remember? You helped her put her things back. There was no money then. No money until you panicked and transferred it from your bag. You're right about one thing. This is your last fight. Seven days in the hospital. Well, I can use it. I, uh, I'm leaving for West Germany tomorrow. Perhaps we could spend an evening, have dinner when we get back. I play a passable game of chess. I can be reached at Circle Six. I think I can remember the number, Doctor. <laughs> we'll see Sir Lawrence Olivier in the Tower of London and, and Buckingham Palace, and, and maybe we'll even get to see the Queen. To Goward. I'm really sorry. I think it's kosher, sharing a room. Oh, we can get the best in every hotel in Europe. What will people say? They'll call us swingers. <laughs> <laughs> Are you taking care of the luggage? Good. Get clearances from the passengers. Stop. Expect first draft in three weeks. Stop. Arrange immediate hardcover and paperback. Mona Briley's new thriller, Murder on Flight 502. Stop. Am I going too fast for you? On my way to... You, as a man responsible for the safety of others, Captain, I'm sure that you understand the necessity for my actions. It's our sworn duty to protect and secure the public for the times, times as in my case, normal procedure fails. We must use our own initiative. We accept responsibility. That's why people like us are given the authority. And I'm sure you agree that to allow those three to profit from their own crime would have been wrong, totally wrong. Consequently, I, I took action. But once I, uh, once I explained to my superior officers, once I explained the situation and my solution, after the departmental inquiry, that standard procedure, after all the paperwork's in, I'll probably receive uh, another citation. I've gotten three in the past 22 years. <laughs> oh, and I'm gonna commend you too, Captain. God knows you did a fine job. Yes, sir, fine job, a fine job. 